Well, hello everyone. This is Krista Lynn, Cowgirl Astrologer, and today I am going to be continuing our discussion um, on astrology and relationships, different things to look at, different aspects, what do they mean. Um, so in my part one, I talked about the South Node and North Node in relationships. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, that might bring some insight. And in part two, I talked about the opposition. Um, what is the opposition in a relationship? And now today in part three, I'm going to talk about the square. Now, I've had a lot of questions about, you know, how am I looking at these? Is it, you know, sun sign to sun sign, moon to moon? Actually, I'm looking at it in all possibilities in a chart. Is that square present? Is that opposition present? It can take on a lot of different forms. So, for example, um, you may have, we'll use the square, since we're talking about the square today, you may have a sun in Leo, and your partner may have, a, have Mars in Scorpio. So then we have to take those two planets and look at the dynamics of those two planets. So the sun is our ego, okay? The sun is a part of us, our identity. It's we want to rise. We want to shine that part of us. That's who, you know, we really are. That's what we're working towards. Mars in somebody else's chart is going to really represent their more aggressive side, um, their determination. So when you take Mars and the sun, you can often have a lot of explosions, a lot of competition, um, you know, a lot of just a lot of tension, okay? So then you take Mars, put that in Scorpio, and you take the Sun and put it in Leo. Now, where do we have this tension? What does this tension look like? Now we can describe it. So, since I'm using this as an example, and this is one of the squares I'm going to be talking about today, but a Leo is somebody that has this real strong drive to be out in the public, to be that inspirational speaker, to get attention, to be seen, to be recognized. They know how to brand themselves. Um, you know, when you look at female women celebrities that are Leos that have branded themselves, you see Madonna, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Martha Stewart, okay? You see these really powerful women and if you look at um, their relationships, I can't speak too much for Martha, Martha Stewart, but Jennifer Lopez and Madonna have, have gone through a lot of relationships. They've gone through a lot of men because Leo, let's just use the woman, a woman, for example, right now, is going to be a woman that really needs and wants kind of her entourage. She's probably going to be attracted to a man that will do anything and everything for her, okay? Open the car door, you know, um, you know, bring up her bubble bath, you know, whatever it is she needs, you know, it makes her feel special when she is, you know, basically being pampered and treated like the queen. Now, there are men out there that love to treat women like that, that have that nature as well. So here, where are they, you know? This is what we're looking for in relationships. What nature is going to be somebody that's, you know, somebody that's going to serve? Well, Pisces might be an energy that likes to serve. Um, there may be some other complications there. I don't want to get into too much of, of, of what would be the best because I want to stick with the square. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, that we want to look for, you know, understanding who we are, somebody that is able to meet that need or that understands that. So now let's take the square, okay? Let's take Leo Sun and Mars in Scorpio. Now one of the um, one of the the films that I think is a great example of this is The Bodyguard. If you guys remember The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. And she's the singer, and she ends up getting some stalker after her, and she needs a bodyguard. And Kevin Costner plays the bodyguard. He's behind the scenes. He's protecting her. He's looking out for her. Um, he's hiding, you know. 
And meanwhile, you know, and he's kind of controlling her because he wants to keep her safe, you know. And she's out there in the public. And so this is that Scorpio Leo dynamic. So can this work? Absolutely. A lot of times using the Leo woman and the male Scorpio for the moment. Male Scorpios can be very, um, uh, they can serve. And they, they pay attention to all the details of what you need. And if they love you, they will do anything for you. Um, they still need to have their power. And they still need to have their um, acknowledgement as well. But this can work. Where this doesn't work is, you know, when that Scorpio energy really wants to overly control and not share that partner with anybody. And so then you've got somebody who has this Leo energy that feels smothered or suffocated or, you know, like they have to hide. And they don't want to hide because they want to be out in the public. So you can kind of see how this can play out. Okay. Now, again, um, if you take a moon and Mars aspect here, moon is going to be your soul. Okay. And you, and you take that and you have that square with Mars. It plays a little different theme, but it's the same energy, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Leo and Taurus. Leo and Taurus are at a square. A square is 90 degrees. If I didn't say that, it's three signs away. Um, and so it's a point of tension. It's a point of change. Um, now you've got Leo and Taurus, so just take a look at that by, the, by themselves. You've got the lion, and you've got the bull. So it's very similar in strong personalities, okay? These are very strong squares, all right? And so, you know, the, the bull um, is usually very devoted to his family, to his herd. Um, he's the protector, but he likes peace, and he likes things to be pretty stable. He kind of likes the same routine every day. And the Leo, the lion, likes adventure. It's always on the hunt. And it also is very protective. So together, they're very protective of their family. That can be a really good thing that they have together. Um, but they can fight for dominant positions. They can kind of hold their ground. Um, so sometimes this energy can play out that way. You know, the Leo is a little bit more dramatic and wants attention. And, and again, the Taurus is more practical. This is ridiculous, you know. So these are things that can play out in that square. Okay, let's continue on. I'm just trying to give you guys a little taste of each one. So here now we have the Pisces. We know Pisces and Virgo opposition. That's what we talked about in the last video. So now Pisces and Gemini. Okay, why is this a square? Where is the tension between these two? So let's use an example of somebody who has Mercury in Pisces. Okay. And let's use the example of somebody who has Venus in Gemini, all right? That would be a square in their chart, okay? So somebody with Mercury and Pisces is going to be a real slow talker, very thoughtful in what they say, will stop and have silent pauses <laughs> that might drive you crazy. They'll look up to the right, to the left, taking in psychic information very sensitive to their surroundings, okay, very sensitive to somebody who's very stressed out, can take that on. Now you have somebody with Venus and Gemini. So Venus is going to be what they love, the things they love, how they can make money, all right, so you're taking the theme of the planet, putting that there. This is somebody who's on the go. This is somebody who loves to talk. This is somebody who loves to be, you know, in a lot of different social you know, um, settings. This is somebody that wants to compete, okay, and talk about intellectual things. So you can see here where this could be a problem. You've got the Pisces wanting to come home, have a quiet dinner, you know, light a candle, turn off the phone, uh, maybe watch an old movie. And then you've got the Gemini, let's say the Gemini goes along with that plan. They want to discuss the different ways that you could have cooked the meal. And they want to discuss, you know, what's going on in the movie. They'll be the ones talking through the whole movie. Okay, so you have these dynamics, and you can see how they can be difficult. But, again, we all have them, you guys. You're not going to find, you know, people say to me, 
you know, will these two energies get along or this and that get along? We're all going to have these aspects that challenge us, challenge us. Now you say, what would the good of this be? Well, you've got a Pisces who's an artist. You've got a Gemini who can advertise and get that Pisces artwork out there and help them sell it, where the Pisces doesn't care so much about that. You know, um, you know, it's just you've got the Pisces who maybe has all these great stories to share, and you've got the Gemini who's a writer. Okay, and you put these two together. So how can you make this stuff work? And also accept the differences in each other. Laugh about them. Not get so crazy. Okay, now you've got the other square here is the Virgo and the Gemini. So they're, Virgo and Gemini are both ruled by Mercury. But Mercury plays out very differently between the two. Gemini is much more scattery. So they like to start and stop a lot of things. And they like to just talk a lot about all the different ways you could do something. Where the Virgo is much more of let's start and let's finish. And what is the, the best way to do it. And I don't want to go all over here and try these different ways. You know, I've read the how-to book. So they can drive each other crazy. <laughs> they can definitely drive each other crazy. But together, they could, you know, work really well together. Again, you've got Mercury, advertising, a you know, writing. Um, this is two, two people that could write a book together or a script together. Um, one of them being more analytical, bringing up the research, and the other one able to just, you know, put all this information together. Okay. Virgos tend to be a lot more faithful in terms of when they are attached to someone or their family. They take it very, very seriously. They're great lifelong partners. Gemini gets bored easy. Um, you know, it might, might be fun at first, this, this dynamic, but Gemini wants to do a lot more things, and Virgo can be very routine, all right? So it's kind of like, you know, that learning how to blend that together. I don't want to say Geminis can be are just the most unfaithful of the Zodiac, because that's, you know, we, we hear that a lot. I think it's that they require a lot of stimulation. So if you are a Gemini, you really want to have, you know, somebody with a very dynamic intellectual side to keep you stimulated. Okay, so now the other square we have here, um, I'm just kind of going through different ones. I didn't talk about the Scorpio Aquarius. This is a really intense square because you've got Aquarius who is very, I know who I am, and they're very detached. You've got Scorpio who also knows who they are, very confident internally. They know who they are. And you've got these two energies. One's very emotional and very psychic and wants to talk about deep emotional things. And you've got the Aquarius who's very uncomfortable with that, okay? So that's, you know, that's where you have this difficulty. On the other end, here you've got somebody, you know, that can work really well together on research and inventions and doing something together that could be very powerful. Um, but these are very dominant energies. So, again, that square can be difficult. Aquarius Taurus, that's another square, okay? So, again, dominant. You see that these fixed signs, these are all the fixed signs, okay? You've got Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. So when you get into fixed signs, you have people that have a hard time being open to different ideas. And even if they're wrong, they'll stand on that just because that's where they, you know, that's what they started with. So... You just have to realize that these dominant personalities, when you put them together, you can do great things with them, but you have to give and take. You have to find ways to give and take. Okay, um, Pisces, Sagittarius, Pisces, Sag. You know, Sag is thinking about the big picture. They're both ruled by Jupiter. Um, Pisces is co-ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. So they're expansive. They're the visionaries. They would love to travel, all, um, you know, creative. Pisces can be very intelligent, but they have to really love what they're studying. It has to be something that really touches their heart. Um, but Sagittarius can be much more disciplined 
and make it through school, um, get into top positions. Um, there, it's very important for them to be in a top position and have people admire them. The Pisces doesn't really care. Pisces can really, you know, be even the homeless person. You know, it takes a lot for them to really care about material things. They have to understand that that material money will, will buy them freedom. You know, they have to get it in their mind. Otherwise, they're just not as, it's just not as important or position. They just care about being, you know, free and being able to tap into the spiritual side. So you've got Sagittarius much more intellectual connecting to spirituality and Pisces much more, in, you know, intuitively. Um, you know, so again, that energy can be a little difficult because Pisces sometimes can see Sagittarius as um, superficial. Okay, so again, a few more few things about that. Um, Sag Virgo. Virgos, you know, are very detailed. And so they want to think everything out and kind of have it played out in their mind, how it's all going to work, all the behind-the-scene ideas and uh, necessary requirements to make something work. Sagittarius is the big dreamer. It'll work out. Just jump out on the cliff and all the, it'll all come together. So that can drive the Virgo crazy, okay? But they're both earthy. They both like to camp. They both like outdoors. Um, they definitely both like to learn. They could have some really in-depth, wonderful conversations. Um, but again, this is a square, so you've got really different type of mentality, um, different thinking. Uh, Virgo is an earth sign. Sagittarius is a fire sign. So... You know, the, the earth can sometimes put the fire out. It's kind of just dull, you know, to the fiery sign. They want to, you know, they want to really experience that spark in life. Where the Virgo, again, is going to be more like, I just want to go home and have my comfortable surroundings, you know, where I can tend to the things, all my little responsibilities. Okay. Um, I'm, um, Aries Cancer. Here's another square. Okay, so Aries. Aries is going to be wanting to take off, jump off the cliff. Um, impulsive, not worrying as much about how things are going to turn out. They have the fire in them to make things turn out. They're good under pressure, but the Cancer, they are very emotional and need their home to be secure. Um, they're going to worry about, you know, if it's a if it's a cancer female giving the kids to daddy because they might come back injured. You know, he's going to take them out snowboarding, out to the ocean, you know, whatever. And the cancer, cancer mom is going to be worried. You know, don't get hurt. You know, don't do that. And, and so you have this energy that's much more, um, you know, needing security, wanting to know what's going on, very emotionally connected. And you've got this other energy that's fiery, you know. So, again, if you have this in your relationship, how can you work through it? You know, the Cancer might need to let loose and have a little fun. Um, the Aries might have to give the finances to the Cancer. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't work until you really realize this is my strength and this is your strength. And how to communicate with each other in, in, by explaining this is how I view things. And I'm not going to change you. You're not going to change me. But... How can we meet in the middle? Okay. Um, cancer, Libra. Um, yeah, you know, again, this is the water and air. Okay. So, you know, Libras are social. They want to get out. They care about how they look. Um, they, you know, want to have that partner. So, so does Cancer. So there's a good sign to that. Um, they, they both like to beautify their home. So there's another positive. Um, I just think the Cancer can be more moody, and the Libra really likes balance. So you've got the Cancer who goes up and down more emotionally, and it can really, you know, offset the Libra, okay? They they like to have, you know, everything's good every day. Hi, good morning, you know. They're real sensitive to when the household gets off balance. Um, so that's just a little bit about that. Aries Capricorn. These are two strong energies. You've got Mars and Saturn here, okay? So Capricorn's going to care a lot about money. Capricorn is going to care a lot about security. Again, Aries, you know, you've got, you've got somebody who needs to have this outlet that, you know, 
throws aside responsibility, you know, um, throws caution to the wind. It's part of them being free and maintaining, you know, that, you know, a place for that fiery energy to go. And Saturn and Capricorn, it will not be responsible. It doesn't make sense, you know. Why waste your energy? Capricorns don't like to waste energy, and Aries need to waste energy. So these are just some things, um, you know. And it's like I was saying earlier that what sign is this in? You know, what or what planet is this in? Um, Capricorn. If you have a woman that has Venus in Capricorn. She is going to be, you know, need a man. She's going to be attracted to a man that's very well off financially and not a slacker, you know, not someone that's going to, you know, she wants to know that she can count on him. If he doesn't make money, she'll be very, very worried. So Aries sometimes can have, you know, be in construction or the type of jobs that, you know, you get paid and then you have, you know, up and down times, you know, because they... They'll just move to the next town and start again. They're able to live on the edge. Again, Capricorn new. So um, as far as pioneers and starting something, if they work together, they could be great in business together. You know, you get a Capricorn on your side, they can really help you build a solid foundation and understand how to make money, and they're determined. Um, Capricorn Libra. Libra just likes a lot more, again, you know, um, social, wanting to be together. The Capricorn can often be a workaholic, um, not want to stop until all work is done, which it's never done. So the Libra can feel lonely, off balance, um, you know, want to spend time with their kids and the Capricorn's always working. So, you know, you can kind of see how these play out. I think I have gone through them all. If I missed any, let me know. Um, you know, and just remember, like I said, you know, it's not so much, is this going to work out? You have to look at the situation and ask yourself, is that something I'm willing to work with that I can understand? Maybe it's a part of you that you need. Maybe you need somebody that's more financially solid, you know, and you can, tr if you can trust them in a relationship or in a marriage, Give them that responsibility and, and laugh and say, oh, thank God, they, they do that so well. I don't. Um, I think you have to laugh at these differences and, you know, not take them so seriously, but yet at the same time understand that they're there for a reason. So I hope that was helpful. You guys can, um, you know, leave a message below. And if you're interested in a relationship reading, you can check out my website at cowgirlastrologer.com. I have a one-hour special right now, and I go deep into answering your questions, um, looking at both charts, and, you know, seeing uh, possibilities in impossible situations. All right, you guys, have a great day.